Well, it's been a while, but time for a new video. Well, since I recorded one. What I have here today is the Telstra Smart Modem Generation 2. And I got a little curious. Because when I pulled this out of the e-waste bin, I'm thinking, eh, okay, we've got SIM backup, which is something I've heard Telstra add recently. And I sort of wondered if Telstra, well, I thought originally that Telstra had still had everything locked down so you couldn't you know, put another SIM card in there. But to the credit, the firmware nowadays seems to give you the option to basically put in whatever profile details you want. So that was curious. And I thought, I wonder what this looks like on the inside. I mean, I don't know if it's like a hollow case or anything inside, or generally should be, but I'm actually wondering if there's more going on in here than what I thought. Now, to start off with, while I did remove this sticker, I haven't actually unscrewed it yet. So, even I haven't seen inside this thing yet. But something that really fascinated me was the power brick. Looking at the bottom here, this unit must be replaced within two years from the manufacturing date being the third or the fifth, uh, third 21. Okay, that doesn't exactly bode well for, you know, general uh, recycling and keeping e-waste out, being sent to foreign countries and causing slow, painful deaths, but, you know, whatever. Not too happy about that. But uh, the thing that fascinated me was this panel here. Charging, standby, power AC, low power. And then looking at the actual power brick, for some reason you can seem to actually take this part off, which sort of fascinated me, which probably would give someone the opportunity to repair it, but I'd highly doubt that that's what it's for. Besides, the screws are probably too expensive. Uh, now, when you turn this thing on, it does actually work. I unfortunately haven't, uh, I'm curious to know if inside there's a lithium ion battery or something, but two years is really terrible for something like this. It just, anyway, with the unit itself, I had a look at the firmware, which I won't show you uh, in this video, I'm not going to go through it at all visually, but I'm somewhat more impressed with what they've got as option-wise under the advanced settings. Something I'd say similar-ish to your stock standard frizz box. But these things are basically the Rolls-Royce when it comes to modems in my opinion, just purely out of the visual options. Now with Fritz, you can get a 3G dongle, a mobile dongle sorry, so you can use mobile internet with it. This has a built-in. And I'm more inclined to like that. The only thing I don't like is the rumors I heard several years ago where Telstra would all of a sudden, like, if you were having like minor issues, they'd just completely reset your device. Or if there was a firmware update, you'd have to go back in and change all your settings back to the way you needed them. So say, for instance, you had a special network set up, all that would just be washed away by a Telstra update. And then there was a the thing of people like, you know, uh, Telstra employees being able to get in and do whatever they want to your modem, which was really concerning, especially since the call center was basically overseas. But I digress. So this is definitely an interesting uh, option when it comes to the power brick of being able to supply a voltage. But my curiosity is, what exactly is that voltage? Oh, here we go. Multimeter time. From what I'm guessing, this volt, the, the ba this battery option is to solve the issue of a power outage and still needing to connect, uh, you know, be able to make phone calls through VoIP. Hence the um, you know, phone thing. My guessing is that this would run at a low power mode, allowing for telephony services, but not the internet since what are we looking at here uh 2.8 amps 
you know, to run that for any extended period amount of time at 12 volts, you would need a serious battery. So my curiosity is, what is the device's output? Now, do we have a, no. So let's just test, see if we've got, yep. Volts DC. So let's just go like this for now and power it on. Oh, this is outputting full 12 volts. Yeesh. Damn. <laughs> I was expecting something like 5 volts, not full 12. Okay, so this thing has enough power coming out of it. I'm not going to check the... I really should check to see what its current output is, but... I'm not set up for that. I didn't think that thing was going to ship out 12 volts without being connected. Woof. That's powerful. Okay. Um, somewhat impressed, to be honest. I did not expect that. The limited life of the power brick does sort of concern me, but I mean, I definitely wouldn't be using that for a lot. All right. So because of these weird bits on here, wow, I'm diving straight into this, I shouldn't be. Anyway, uh, you, uh, the unit doesn't really have any screws other than the bottom. Looking at the case itself, apart from here, this uh, the arse end of it seems to be the only part that seems to be able to separate. Uh, and if you're wondering, yeah. so it takes a full sized sim, and the card that I pulled out of it was white. So literally unbranded. The downside is, when it comes to firmware, I would like to use third-party stuff. You know, open DD Watt or whatever, but they generally don't make them for modems like this. I mean, something like a D-Link or... What is it? Linksys, that sort of stuff. You know, brands they will, but not, uh, not ISP-dependent ones. You can understand why, because you literally have no idea if any major change goes through. Which just makes these complete e-waste. Alright, so I've got those three screws out, and I'm going to try to give it a little pull. Okay, so that is definitely more interesting than I thought. And luckily, if you can call it that, I need to remove three more screws. Wow, the lighting is really not good today. It's also raining, so fun with that. Now, I'm assuming that's not going to be aluminium or steel, but a cheap metal just to give it weight. And it's not just slipping out. Huh. So offhand, I think I can see the mobile antenna. Um, definitely see a heat sink in there. like I might be able to just pop this out. Okay, there we go. Now, 
This is definitely an odd way of doing things, but okay. Sewing machine screwdriver. That is stuck down this panel at the front here, at the top. I sort of understand why, but. Oi! I did not make this to be pulled apart. Oh. <laughs> you nasty little. Yeah, there are two screws on this, isn't there? Okay. So trick if you want to pull this apart without breaking it, but between these buttons here, you've got a screw, and down here you've also got a screw. Which are well hidden. Well hidden. Bastards. Yeah, now it's loose. <laughs> uh. All right. So I've really buggered that up. Let's see if I can put that back in place. Damn. Okay. Uh, nasty trick to hide these two screws. Oh wait, no, it's not here, it's, I'd say between the WAN and the mobile LED display part. So yeah, you got to punch those out to get in here. And that metal frame seems to go completely through the whole thing, it holds it together. Okay. Um, interesting. So there are a couple of different antennas. And I can't tell if they're for different frequencies. Oh, hang on. So this modem both has 2 and 4G. Sorry. This modem has both... Uh, 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and it's also going to have mobile but I can't tell which antennas do what specifically so what I'll do next is attempt to dismantle this whole thing right do, 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 do. one two Three, four, five, six. I'm curious to know what exactly that antenna is for. So it's connected to this board here, which I'm assuming some sort of transmit receiver. There's another one here. Well, I'll give the uh, motherboard manufacturer a bit of a pro on this, but uh, they've used the same screws all over the place. So personally, if it wasn't for the uh, potential of having someone from Telstra being able to access the device at any time, whenever they feel like, I might consider this as a backup for a modem. I mean, that's if Telstra have decided that they'll allow people to use non-Telstra accounts on this thing to access the internet. So I do like the glue that they've used in here to hold things down. 
I mean, that definitely helps, but... Uh, that pad there... I don't know. Okay, so that shield connector... There we go. Hmm, there's another one. I mean, this doesn't look like it was cheap to manufacture. Looks like someone really put some effort into the finances of this thing. I mean, this metal frame is just... Yeah, I've not seen that. In modems before. I don't pull them apart on a regular basis, but... Bit of a shocker. I mean, considering it's just literally a piece of shit device that Telstra just sends out to people. This, this kind of engineering is just. Damn. Now, I'm curious as to why that there is exposed. Maybe it's some kind of grounding. Which I'm a bit fascinated about. Yeah, those clips. I wonder if they're grounded somehow. screw. Alright, so you know if you're pulling this apart, there's a hidden screw in this um, rubbery enclosure. Oh, and there's another one here. So really the glue is what would hold putting this thing back together 100%. And there do seem to be different screws used throughout this construction. Ooh. What do we got in here? Oh. Fascinating. So I'm going to try and... Okay, so this metal enclosure is actually a heat sink. Alright, I'm impressed. Which means it might actually just be aluminium. And no, I'm not going to say aluminium. I'm not American. Get over yourself. That edge connector is something fancy. Wow. I have to wonder if this can be used as a switch independently. So I'm going to see what happens when I... Yeah, see there's a lot more intelligence on this side. actually power that independently. It has to be powered on this side. Well, technically it has to be powered on uh, the up other PCB. Unless, of course, you figure out where the voltage input is. I am fascinated to know whether or not this can actually be ran independently. Now, I thought there might have been something in here, such as a removable card, but it turns out that's a no. I mean, that massive amount of, uh, 
well, adhesive, like heat stuff. Definitely going to prevent you from doing a few things. So, what's holding this from coming out would be the DC jack. So there are different screws in here. You can see some standard Phillips ones, but they don't seem to be holding the PCB in. It seems to just be holding this plastic part together. And I'm assuming that's purely for all the antennas. So there's a clip here in this top corner. There we go. That's got it. Okay. That's out. My guess is these shields are for CPU and anything that does with transmit receive. I got a feeling they were trying to knock off the iPhone 10 with this design. Seriously, what the hell? So let's see what happens when I try to power this thing without having the bottom connected. So no bottom illumination. It's actually a shame you can't see any of the chips on here. Now there's a light at the bottom of the unit and I'm curious to see if that'll light up. There we go. Yep. So that's where it is. I've not pulled apart a modem for a while. This is incredibly fancy. I am curious to know what those two uh, service mount components are. They look Oh, they might be coils. I'm assuming it's going to be some sort of power chip. Yep, service mount RGB LED. You can see the uh, control circuit. Oh, the power circuitry there. I can see here we've got some kind of storage. Might be RAM though. Although RAM would probably be under the shield. Hmm. It's just a shame these heat sinks have been soldered in. But okay. Well I guess one of the days they just slap a PCB in a bit of plastic and you know, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, I'm probably not putting that back together. Yeah, I am curious to know if this is actually just aluminium or if it's some other metal composite for heatsink. I mean, honestly, I wasn't going to reuse this device simply because of the uh, Atelstra part, but mm, I am actually tempted to keep this 
as it is, and later on see if I can just use it as a dumb switch. Well, not a switch, sorry, a hub. Switches are managed devices that allow you to move data around while a hub, well, network hub, uh, it sends the data out on all ports, regardless of who it's supposed to go to. So, if I had the proper setup, what I'd be doing is figuring out which of these pins, sorry, I'd be looking at the voltage coming in, which is going to be here. So it seems to go this side to this pad, and that's probably just some sort of a testing point. Hmm. I'm guessing multiple pins must be used for power transfer from this side to this side. So you could definitely do an injection here, but where's the primary power? I mean, this chip could be it. Although I don't know if the device would function properly with a third party power adapter. That's the downside. I mean, for recovery, uh, if it was possible, I'd definitely take the USB plug This would definitely be useful for recovering in, in the just-in-case event that you have one. Uh, honestly, I've been considering about making my own um, switch. And it looks like that might not be so difficult. I mean, the WAN part would be, you know, useful. The problem would be the firmware. I mean, you'd have to configure it if you had the WAN port. I mean, if you just had the Ethernet, you should shouldn't have to. It should run just with bare, but you've still got the um, soft the firmware running in the background. That would make things more awkward. Well, with that, what I will say, it might be worth recovering the flash storage, or NAND module, however you want to call it. I mean, looking under these would be interesting, but I definitely don't have the tools for that on hand. Um, yeah, these are in fact fascinating. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to stick this down flat, or at least try to. And give you a 4K view of that PCB. Now, how's my... Yep. Although it's probably not going to be as much. Flip her upside down. That's the bottom side. And this is the... I'm going to guess primary PCB. Ooh, those LEDs might be fun to try to recover at some point. Switches would probably be useful. And this will be the WAN USB port uh, PCB. So, if I lay that flat like so, there we go. And then flip her upside down, and you've got the bottom of it, which is utterly fascinating. I uh, wish I was good at recovering and making schematics because it would be fun to do that with this. Oh, well, I'm going to go put this in the parts bin for recovering of file, uh, recovering of components for later on. I mean, these here, I might end up needing one of those one day. I think they're SMA ports. Uh, yeah. I'm curious to know, what the hell is that? What is it? What on earth would have such a small antenna attached to it like that? Anyway, 
I wouldn't put it past Telstra to spy crap on this thing. So an additive that I thought was um, a bit interesting for what Telstra have been sending out with these devices, fridge magnets with your uh, SSD and password on there. While useful for the family, anyone who can look through and get a close up of your fridge, either through a window or getting into your house, will not only one, get a hold of your uh, login details, but then could just sit there and do whatever the hell they want. So, um, you know, not just big pwned being a uh, major problem for Telstra, but you know, that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The fact they use self tapping as well as your sort of standard threaded screws, that's fascinating. Although, considering it sometimes they just dread itself through plastic. See, this is what I don't get. And that's what's driving me nuts right now. Do I? All right, screwdriver. Stuff it. Let's take a look. The thing that really disappointed me is that there was no pop or that mighty crack sound that you hear when you open up a you know, something that's been sealed in the factory. And even this, like, very small, very, very small. That is too depressing. All right. I don't think so. Oh. oh no, it's on the inside. So that by itself doesn't open up. Definitely not getting that in there. Okay, so offhand, I can't just fling it open. Where did I put my. Ah, oh, there it is. Magic opening tool. So let's see what we can feel with this. I'm actually debating whether or not they have, in fact, f uh, welded that in. But I thought of another way of cracking in on the side here. Yep, that is something different. Ugh. All right, so I'm not pulling that open today. What a bugger. So I can't test the current output of the power brick and because it's been friction welded shut I can't open it up to find out what kind of battery it has inside but that's definitely going to be fascinating to find out <laughs> why wouldn't it be I'm I do want to keep this and try to recover some components from it at a later date. Ooh, zero ohm resistors. I wonder why. Anyway. So I do want to try to recover the NAND flash from this. I mean, these heat sinks might be interesting. I wish I had a way to test if that's aluminium or not. Look 
put all these antennas? Well, modern technology. I'm still somewhat confused as to why some of these antenna cables have the sh protective sheathing removed. I mean, it might be grounded along the way, but I've never seen that before. I mean, honestly, it looks like a lot of work actually went into the design of this. It's just a shame that, yes, it looks like you can use other SIM cards in here, but whether or not it's locked or SIM restricted to Telstra only equipment, that I haven't tested and I didn't test. I'm thinking if I actually pull this com completely to pieces, I might be able to give the... Oh, are you absolutely... Yeah. <laughs> oh, nasty. So, it's been plastic riveted to the uh, metal, both here, 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 and here. You nasty bastards. I was going to give you points for... Now, can I, f I can't identify what each antenna is for. I mean, if you're able to look up and, oh wow, you are tiny. Some of these are tiny ass. Anyway, I think I might call this one quits now. Simply because this video didn't exactly go the way I wanted. But I have to give uh, definite points for, you know, internal metal case like this. The dual PCB design, considering the sheer amount of crap that's on here. It looks like Telstra either bought something that was already made and pretty fancy smanchy or they commissioned this. That or they could have just had their own team designer but I don't see that being a possibility. I mean, they may have just provided details of what they wanted and this was what was provided. But I mean, <whistles> there is a lot here and I, ooh, header. So I'm assuming you probably get that may be a way to get in and actually see the bootloader, like serial access to the device. This, yeah, that'd be nice. <sighs> oh well, this isn't exactly a destructive teardown if I bother to reassemble it, but whatever. I'm definitely taking this with me to head out to Hackerspace next. The self-powered brick. <laughs> Fascinating. What would make this better is if you could actually replace the battery in it and it was bigger. Anywho, this has been my... Uh, Teardown of a Telstra smart modem generation 2 with voice backup. Oh. Oh, that's what might this be for. Anywho. Uh, yibba dee yibba